Ball, centre target. Hit. Top right corner. Hit. Middle centre play. Oh, awesome. Uh, there we go. <laughs> Today I wanted to go through a little bit of the logic of um, how I do or we do our shooting for our ELR stuff. Um, not necessarily how it has to be done, not necessarily how it should be done, but how we do it. And a little bit of, with that, making sense of some of the equipment we do that we're now making for sale and that sort of stuff as well. But essentially I'll go through the process. Basically I started in most places. Here is probably a pretty typical example of where I, where I started in doing this sort of stuff. Now this is just a little um, 17 Hornet rifle. Ignore the calibre, um, it could be a 300 Win Mag or a 3 Shred Lepore. Um, essentially what I'm trying to put forward here is that it is pretty much of a classic style. This is just a Boyd's um, wooden thumbhole stock, but it's still pretty much of a classic style. From a cheek riser to where the butt pad is, um, to the angle of the butt stock, to it's just simply this one's got a Picatinny rail and, and just a normal little um, bipod on the front of it, but it's just shooting off a normal bag. And I started in this place. Now when I found I was shooting this sort of thing, my initial issues I had, which I ran into, um, and being, uh, being a mechanic and being a guy who looks at problems maybe a little bit outside the box on occasions, I wanted to get things working well. And I'll go through more of that logic in a minute. But essentially, this is pretty normal place. I'll be down, in behind my scope, using my bag to adjust onto my target, that was how I was doing. I found down here, my chest is compressed on the ground, my neck is crinked over quite a bit trying to get onto my target. I found this stuff here, yes you can shoot like this and you can shoot well like this. Um, I should have obviously my heels on the ground, my legs spread, the, the, the essentially more planted um, is very much a way of, that is, taught by a lot of camps as to how to shoot. I found twisting and getting my heels down um, is an uncomfortable, close on painful process. Um, I found compressing my chest down and twisting my neck up, I end up getting a sore neck very fast. And I also find that both my breathing and my heart affect the crosshairs and everything is basically more stressed. So. My simple process, the other thing you're doing, and we're varying on target, squeezing the bag. Ah, uh, listen, it works, but I found it became, it was, it was obvious, a notable thing that you'd start wriggling around and fighting things when you were doing multiple shots. So the simple process for me was quite simple to start off with. What I needed to do was get myself from being compressed so hard, lift myself up a little bit. So for me, that was quite easy to start off with. I went through the process of raising up my bipod, get it to the right place, and then, I used the same bag at that stage. I then, I used to shoot with these. These are bits of wood, bits of, um, and blocks of, uh, just a bit of rubber, bits of wood that I would then put my bag on to however many, um, whether it was two alongside each other or it was two on top of each other, because I've gone so high on my bipod. But essentially I'd start to shoot like this. So instantly for me, <laughs> I'd lift yourself up, I felt a lot more comfortable. My neck is no longer crinked right over. I can actually come down more, more relaxed. I'm using my, the structure of my elbows, shoulders. Um, there's a nice triangle grip here that's, that's making it nice and stable. I'm not a little featherweight. I'm 220 pounds or 100 kilos for, the, for, for us in Australia. Um, six foot four, so I've got a lot of weight. I'm not trying to plant too much. I don't need to worry about getting heels down for, for more traction. Um, really, if I've got essentially from my lower chest to my thighs planted on the ground, I'm not moving around. It also lets me use my toes to adjust myself if I need to. Um, I'm, I'm set up here. You've got to be conscious to be not using your toes for traction to push against when you're shooting, but I find quite comfortable in the situation. So that worked quite well. Um, what I'd gained in doing that, um, I'd lost a little bit in the fact that it's now sticking up in the air and I'm not really nice ground, that works quite well, but it's not quite so stable. Um, I also found that 
you know, you can obviously in this situation make slight adjustment by moving backwards and forwards. So that's a nice feature. The negative feature, especially on high recoil, is that that same thing, that up and down movement, is also happening on, the sh on firing a shot. Now in theory, your shoulder point is where the rifle should move back onto, um, so that shouldn't be an issue. I still found um, that for me, I wanted to mechanically make things work properly, so I want that same straight backward and forward movement out of the bipod to be emulated at the back. So I put the, the rail on the back of this to start off with. So you'll see on my other rifles, um, and I'll grab one of those now so you can see what we're talking about. We'll swap over rifles and take that next step. Okay, so here's one of my later rifles. Um, you can see I've put the base on here. I've actually put this, this rail on here. Various ways of mounting them. I generally am making the piece of steel that fits the stock, and then there's basically simply screws that go up into the stock that go through and hold the rail where it's supposed to be. Um, and not much more complicated than that. I tend to make them, this one's out of, made out of heavy wall steel pipe, so it adds some weight to the rifle, which tends to make a larger caliber shoot a little bit nicer. The other feature it does, in a hidden feature, is it makes, as you can see, this is the same stack of bags I got on here. And you can see now, in that same stack of bags, I've actually got my shoulder position really too high. It's because I've actually raised my stock height to where I'll be back down in here, push that forward to where it should be, um, back down in here to get that same sort of comfortable height. You also notice that you know, I haven't bogged those in and settled those down properly yet. There we go. You'll actually um, notice that now my straight forward and back movement is there because of my rail. I still have the same feature of adjusting it is about squeezing the bag, so a little bit of tension there. But this becomes then, I'm up on my, my elbow platform. Um, and this becomes nice and stable. So it was my first step of going into a nice place. Um, and really then I noticed in my partner shooting, more so than myself, that those constant fine adjustments of squeezing this bag, as it settles more when you shoot it, those constant fine adjustments become a bit of a nuisance. Well, we first, just before I go another step, I will say that the other thing that really where your bag should be positioned so that when it goes bang, everything reacts correctly, is it really should be positioned underneath your cheek well. So underneath where your cheek pressure is, is where your bag should be positioned. So those two things are sort of working together. You notice when you have the, the benefit of being able to move your bag on an angled stop to move it back to where you get your right height, then you've also got those things are no longer lined up. So the, there's a yin and a yang there, but I ideally prefer this. So we got to a stage anyway where we've got the bag up nicely, we've got the, my shoulder, my position's up nicer, I'm much more comfortable. Um, in the same breath I run my scope fairly high so it's up so my head isn't tilted over so that's a lot more comfortable but the adjustment side of things. So then I started down the process and there's videos to show that but I started down the process of an adjustable bag base. Over here. My latest version of adjustable bag base. Big little process I'll go through. I'll link to a proper video where I let people see this unit properly. But essentially, it started as a fairly basic system that gave this adjustment ability um, that turned into then getting some more stability so it got to a wider base. A viewer said, Is it possible to get left and right hand adjustment? With not too much thought, I designed the rest of it. I went through the process and thought, listen, no, that's not too hard to do. Uh, as you can see, have fitted in there where there is left and right hand adjustment. Now this has been with us now, been running for a couple of years like that. You see the condition, it's all stainless steel, aluminium knobs and stainless steel, basically otherwise. Um, it, this is the, the, there's a center frame, obviously it rolls up and down. Um, I have a couple of foams to give me different height ability for adjustment. Um, and then I've run a bag that's probably a slightly more modern, but a brag that fits in there. They're just one of the little Allen um, shoot and rest bags went on there. So you can see what that gives us. We can take that, this exact same thing, take my, my pieces of, of rubber, still a good bag, don't, get, don't see anything wrong with it, for a very cheap fill yourself bag. Put this thing back in here and we've got back to now in, in a simple shooting form, we have a bit more stability because we get a nice wide spread. We have the same ability, the same ability to control our, our get that bag in the right place. Let's blow my cheek rest. So it's in the same place in the way I've got the height 
that I want in my an, an adjustable height. The big detail is this adjustability. Not only lets me get onto a target easier, but each time I shoot, and this, these bags, as all of them, will settle. They'll get further and further, they'll settle. You know, if you do three shots, it might not move much. If you do 10 shots or 15 shots, it's gonna move, it's gonna settle. I can just keep correcting it. I can just correct that, and I can make sure, even if I've got to reset my rifle, there's really no problems to correct it. I generally move the big movements with the whole bag and move it around. You want to tweak it with things, you really can finally tweak your left and right hand where you lift yourself off your rifle, make sure the rifle's settled, put yourself back on the rifle, get your natural shooting position, make sure that both the rifle's natural position and your natural shooting position are in the same place and really can help with consistency over consistent shots and a good setup like this where you're not fighting too much can also help your, your first shot. Essentially that's our bag base, that's where it comes from. I'll do more, some more, I, um, I'll link this to a, or I'll link down the description below, which will go through the three different models of bases, um, of basically from the small one up to this, um, which comes in both left hand and right hand, and that's basically the reason for it. So in that, there's another piece that is in, integral to our design in this form of shooting. This shooting condition we've got here, or the shooting um, area we've got here is not unlike what we shoot a lot. We'll shoot in this sort of ground where there's dirt and dust. This is powdery, flaky stuff up here with, with basically leaf litter and, and bark litter and seeds and all the rest of it around a bit of stuff, untouched dirt really. Um, two in the paddock, which is whether it's broken paddock or it's, be, or it's just been ripped up paddock or it's got dry store or grass, is a good part of our shooting season. A good 75-80% of our shooting season is in dusty conditions. So what we designed, what I basically designed out of that was a muzzle brake that would, which is one of ours up here, um, which was really simply designed about stopping the dust from going, the, the blast from going down on the ground. Stopping it from essentially with a normal muzzle brake on here, whether it's a radial muzzle brake or just a, a, a narrower of, of essentially side port muzzle brake, still a lot of dust would come down and blow it up all over here. Um, I, <laughs> both for comfort, dust in the eyes and that sort of stuff, but also lo looking after the gear from the rifle to especially your glass on top there. Having that dust go everywhere doesn't make it easier. These muzzle brakes were designed to stop that. There's actually, I wouldn't call it a side effect, it was sort of thought about in the design in various processes I went through in learning about making muzzle, bra muzzle brakes, but actually something that I really haven't spoken about at all, which is a real notable feature towards our design of muzzle brake, is that the percussion impact, that, that effect that some muzzle brakes, especially on larger calibers, give you, that same as being tapped on the, on the end of the nose or smacked in the face, and that shot to the sinuses, that, that real whack that you'll get out of some muzzle brakes. Well, this muzzle brake doesn't do that. It's for a very specific reason. Um, in its simplest form, the essentially when the shoulders of where the blast is hitting against an edge that is open to your face, and the closer that is into the muzzle or to the actual blast, the more direct back to your face sort of impact comes out of the muzzle um, is what causes it. And by going wider with things and in keeping it to where you're basically shielded from the front one via the rear one, in the fashion of there is it's, it's making all the blasts travel more sideways, we really found with these systems it is not something you suffer from. The impact in the face, that percussion, that is the ugly bit of shooting a large calibre with a big muzzle brake on it, um, these ones really don't suffer from. But essentially, that's what I wanted to go through. The, the building blocks of where my logic came from um, and a little bit about the products from our muzzle brakes to our, to our bag bases, what they come, what they're really worth for um, everyone to wear, in, in, in my honest opinion, um, for anyone doing prone shooting um, or even bench rest shooting, that these are features that can work to help you for, for muzzle brakes and large calibers. Um, I like my muzzle brake, they're working really well. Um, they are a bit of a, a, a dirt thing, but recently I've run into a couple of people talking about a percussion thing, and it is actually answering that as well. So it is something to consider if that's something that um, you're either sensitive to or, or have a rifle that's like that, these things are something that can really help with that. Anyway, we'll um, put some links at the bottom of the video to go through that where I'm gonna do videos about our individual products um, and 
just goes through a little bit more explanation. There's also a link to a lot more comprehensive thing about our shooting process, about the body form and all that sort of stuff, largely about um, comfort and making it consistent. But uh, we'll put some links down there. And um, thanks for checking us out with this one. And we'll be to you shortly with another shooting video.